Hi friend, today we are going to be painting this lovely whimsical folk art inspired painting. We are going to be using our Windsor and Newton and our Etcher Everyday Sketchbook. I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, I have here the sketch and if I'm gonna go ahead and let you look at it and then we're gonna go ahead and lighten it up but I wanted to make sure you guys could actually see it and today we're gonna use warm colors which warm colors are basically your reds your yellows, your oranges, and like golds. And we're gonna use some of the contrasting colors to really make the picture pop. So, I think starting on Friday, I'm gonna be beginning a color mixing series and I have a pull down below of the paints that I have that we can um, choose from because for the color mixing series I want to use the same paint so it's going to be easy for beginners to follow and it won't break of the bake. Um, supplies can be kind of pricey and I know this time of year people are probably still recovering from Christmas and a lot of people have gotten Christmas supplies already so um, that's why I wanted to see who has the most of what or whatever so this way we can kind of go with the majority because I have a um, good bit of paint and I had a suggestion for Arteza and I am so sorry that I cannot do Arteza. I do not have that in my arsenal of watercolors. Um, there's only a few watercolors uh, brands that I really don't have. Sminky, Sminky or Sminka, I only have one of those. I do not have any Core and I do not have any Paul Rubin besides just the Mei Lang and i do you know so th there's just a few that i really i don't have so i was trying to pick something that um everybody has so today we are going to use however my i'm going to use my windsor and newton paint because that's what i have been using um i am using my etcher everyday sketchbook and then I'm going to use this Micron pen and then this uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's a Bleed Proof White. The brushes I am using, I'm using my Kopman round size 10 and I love this brush. I am using my Silver Black Velvet size 6. I am going to use my, possibly my size four round of my Princeton Velvet Touch. And then my number two Christy Rice brush. And honestly, this brush, you guys, I have used it so much. Honestly, it, I love this brush. You can purchase the set off of Amazon and it is really worth it. Um, I like using her brush, Christy Rice brushes to practice florals. And also you can use them for landscape. So I have her first initial set. I did not have her second. Anyway, so we got this all lightened up and you can see I had a race aligned, but that's okay. And we are gonna begin. I like beginning with the sky first. So I'm gonna go ahead and I like taking my sketch and putting it upside down because I wanna make sure I'm in frame. I'm gonna go ahead and do it like, kinda like this for now. 
but we'll flip it. I just want to make sure you guys can see my color mix in and everything. But we're going to go ahead and begin with the sky. And for the sky, I want to go ahead and I want to take some of my turquoise. I want this sky to be pretty bright. I think that's going to look really nice. And I want to use contrasting colors because I really want to make the colors pop. So making sure I have a, enough of this. And then um, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and opt for what on what. So I'm going to make sure my, bre my brush is not soaking wet. Here in a couple weeks too, um, once we get done with the watercolor mixing series, we will also be having some beginner tips and techniques. So that will be coming soon. You just got to wait for it. I have all kinds of ideas, you guys, for this channel. I'm getting braver. I'm getting braver. And I want to, at this moment, take a moment to thank all my new subscribers. I really greatly appreciate it. And like I said, those who have watched me from the beginning, I could not have done this without you. You guys have been absolutely wonderful. And it has really helped me grow in my confidence. So I just want to thank you. And... I am so appreciative of you guys. Um, I'm finally able to do super chats if anybody's interested. If not, that is fine with me. Um, I just, honestly, I just appreciate you guys watching and showing, um, the hitting the likes that really helps support my channel and it lets other people know that well, let YouTube know that other people may like my stuff. So I really appreciate it. And if you don't want to do something like a super chat, then, you know, like in a person's channel is always a good way to support them. And that's for any YouTuber, you know, it's, we take our time to be content creators and Sometimes just having that like is a really good way to show support. But enough about that. We are going to just move on. I'm trying to get this wet. You guys know I'm a slower painter. So I just want to make sure everything's evenly wet. And I have been loving these folk art paintings. Um, I will do another floral but it ain't going to be soon, I'll have to admit. Probably maybe a couple weeks. I just, uh, I think I need to build more confidence in doing the loose florals. And once I'm confident enough, then I'll be able to feel confident enough to show you guys. Because there's so many quite talented YouTubers out there for florals that, you know... I want to be able to show you guys the right thing, so. Anyway, we are going to carefully try to go around. And I went over my tree there, but it should be okay. Because Phaleo Blue is not the most forgiving color. But we're going to go ahead and try to fade it. Okay. It's not perfect, but it will certainly work. And then... Going down and, like I said, I maybe should have masked this first, but... 
I don't always like to mask everything. Not everybody has masking fluid. But anyway, moving on because I do not want hard lines. That's what I am definitely trying to prevent. So kind of going around the chimney. And sharpening that up. Okay, and then moving on to the top. And you guys, at any point in time, if I get a little bit quiet, it's just because I am concentrating and trying to move fast. And if I move too fast for you guys at any point in time, you guys can always pause the video and then go back to it. When um, I first learned watercolor and was trying to follow along with tutorials and same thing with coloring, I totally had to do that. There's just, there was no way. I, some of it I could not keep up. You know, people move at different speeds and I try to go pretty slow, but there's certain things where you have to move a little bit faster. So we're going to go ahead and I just want to make sure it's a little darker at the top. And I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of ultramarine because I want it a little darker at the top. And then kind of blending it down. Okay. love how this guy is gonna look it may be it looks like it's dark but it, it because of it being wet on wet it is gonna dry lighter so putting that up and then what i'm gonna do is i like wiping my tape because i don't want no back runs and you can always possibly get a back run if you leave the extra on the tape you might be able to hear my son. I'm not sure. Sometimes you never can tell what's going to be in the background. So my birds are being pretty quiet for right now. My boyfriend's due to come home from work. So my dog will go nuts when he gets home. Okay. So now that we have that done, we're going to go ahead and flip this back around. I'm going to go ahead and make sure we're all in camera view. Because I like to make sure that you can see my mixes when I do any. So we're going to go ahead and take a little bit of this turquoise. And I'm going to put that right here. So we know. And then once this dries, I'll be able to mark it. So bear with me. But this is our turquoise. And if you don't have turquoise, you can easily use a phaleo blue, either the green or the red, whatever you have, or you can use cerulean blue, magnesium blue, or Prussian blue. You just want a cooler blue. And then underneath it is going to be our ultramarine and turquoise mix. So we're going to go ahead and put that there. And then we'll mark that once that dries. Okay. So we'll let that dry. And then, so now we're going to go ahead and I want to do the ground. And in the ground, it's going to be, I want it to be like a yellowish gold. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a little bit of this lemon yellow. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this cadmium yellow. And having it a little bit watered down because cadmium yellow is quite opaque. 
And then I'm going to take some cronacridone gold. And if you don't have no cronacridone gold, you can um, definitely use a gamboge. I think gamboge is a pretty close color. Or you can take some cadmium yellow and maybe put some like burnt sienna in it because you're gonna, or a little bit of like cadmium orange. But I think the burnt sienna would definitely work better. So we're gonna go ahead and I am gonna wet my ground here. And I am for this part still using my size 10 round brush of my Copman. And a money saving tip, I would go to Michael's and wait for their coupon to come out, like 40% off, and you can get this brush for a really good price um, if you guys have a Michael's in your area. Filling did not have one for the longest, but we finally got one, so yay for my town. Anyway... There's a hair there per usual, but that's okay. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a gradient. And I wanna make sure I have enough of this lemon yellow. And if you don't have lemon yellow, you could definitely just do it between the two. I'm gonna be a little extra and I want it between the three colors. So I'm gonna begin by doing a strip of this lemon yellow. I love lemon yellow, it's such a pretty color. I've had and used this color for a long time. And actually, I think this might be lemon yellow deep. I'm all, a matter of fact, I'm almost positive this is lemon yellow deep. So, by Windsor and Newton. And then I'm going to go ahead and I wanted to take some of this cadmium yellow. Need a little bit more. You guys, really, this is bad timing for me to have to do that. So you want to have plenty enough mix ahead of time so you can have time to work on your what on what. And we will talk about that in when we go to do water control. And talk about water control techniques. And that video will be coming soon. So for all you newbies at watercolor... You're going to want to definitely hit that bell um, notification and probably subscribe because this way uh, YouTube will let you know when that video will upload. And that will be once we're done with the color mixing series. And so I'm just trying to blend this all up. And I want a little bit it to be more of the Cronacridone gold. And we're able to do this still at this point in time because it is still wet. And I want to take some of that cadmium yellow because we really want a gradient and I want it to be bright enough so it really makes the sky pop. And then I think we're going to go ahead and take some Burnt Sienna, which is one of my favorite colors. And at the bottom, we're just going to go ahead and put the Burnt Sienna in. And this is going to mix and mingle with that Cronacridone Gold. And it's going to look very pretty. And you can see with these warmer colors, okay, I don't want to mess with it too much, but I want everything to be blended. So we're going to go ahead and let that do its thing. And we are going to go ahead and do our roofs. Now for our roofs. I'm going to go ahead and use a neutral color so we can tie in and we don't need to introduce another color. So I'm going to take some ultramarine blue and I'm going to put that here in the corner. 
And before I forget, actually, we're going to backtrack. So we're going to take a little bit of this lemon yellow. And I'm going to go ahead and mark it. So we got lemon yellow. Hopefully you guys can see everything I'm doing. I try to be very mindful of that. Okay, there's the lemon yellow. We want a little bit of the cadmium yellow. I just put it over on a slot so I can get the purest form of the color and not have the mixes for that part. And then our cranacridone gold. and our burnt sienna. I'm glad that you guys are finding that these mixes, showing the mixes are actually, it helps. So our burnt sienna. Okay. So then what we're gonna do is we're going to take our, some of this um, burnt sienna and mix it with the ultramarine blue. And if you can see here, it's this shade right here. And I'm going to go ahead and opt for a smaller brush. So I'm gonna take my Princeton size, or my silver black velvet size six. And we're gonna take that mix and kind of dab it. And we're gonna go ahead and put in our roofs. Making a little bit more of the mix. You want to make sure you have enough, but I've done this gray mix for so long. It's one of my favorite um, neutrals that I can fairly get it pretty quickly. And you can either make it darker or lighter. I want to make it dark. So hopefully I'm not, I got my hand in it. You don't want to do that. Probably would have been better if I would have waited till it dried, but hopefully I can fix it. But anyway, I wanted to get the roof filled in. Try not to have my head in the way, but sometimes trying to get Things nice and sharp. Okay. And then kind of blend it in and sharpening that up. Okay. And let's see if I can fix that a little bit. Okay, good enough. It may not be perfect, but that's okay. Just be mindful you don't put your hand in stuff. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the second roof as well. And at that time, we're just going to go ahead and let things dry so I don't continue to put my hand in stuff. So, going ahead and doing this second roof. And 
I like filling it in, kind of getting the shape first, but you don't have to do it that way. Um, you kind of want to be quick or you're going to have a line. Okay, and then you want to make sure you get that triangle right here. apologize if my head or hand is in the way, but I want to make sure this is straight so it looks right. I mean, it is whimsical, but you still kind of want it to look like what it is. Okay, and now at this break, we're going to go ahead and take a little break. You won't be able to tell, but when we come back, we will do the bushes and the house. Okay, we are back, which for you, it was no time, but I went ahead and marked our colors that we were using. My paper here is dry. It's starting to want to pop up, so I'm just gonna go ahead and clip it a little bit. And then we are gonna go ahead and continue on. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my size two and we're gonna go ahead and you know re-wet this darker color because we are gonna go ahead and fill in our windows and our door with it so I want to go ahead and get that done I really do love these little whimsical folk art inspired paintings. And they are just so relaxing and so much fun. I really do love them. Let's clean up that window a little bit. And that is what you do not want to do is so we're going to go ahead and dab that and that is something you did not we did not want to do and that's why water control is very important so we're just going to go ahead and erase that and start over and that's sometimes you can catch it right away and that's why in a video coming soon we will be talking about water control. So go on ahead and fix in that. And then making sure we dab off the extra because we do not want too much water. And then we're either gonna take a white gel pen or our PH Martin bleed proof white for the kind of like the, the thing that goes in between the windows, the pane or whatever. I don't know, um, can't think of the technical term of it, but you'll see. So we're just gonna go ahead and Fill this. And then we'll do these two windows, three windows as well. So we got one here. And one here. trying to get the windows pretty straight and it don't help my I don't know what my kid's doing but I think he's jumping around and it's shaking my mobile home I live in a trailer and he wants to shake it
And then the dog might have been running through the house. I'm not sure. But I wish he wouldn't do it when I'm painting. Okay. We're going to go ahead and do this door. And I almost think the door should be a little bit darker. So we're just going to go ahead and take in some more of that Optimarine and our Burnt Sienna. Take in some more Burnt Sienna. And see how dark that is. Dabbing it off, and then we can go ahead and fill it in with that. But I'm going to go ahead and take some water and then blend it out. Because I want it dark, but not too dark. So it's almost like a cream consistency. I'll tell you what, I do love this brush and I'll tell you why. It has the sharpest little point, but my, when your hands shake, it don't still help with that, but it is what it is on the hand shaking. Okay, so I just want to straighten this up a little bit more. It will drive me bonkers. I don't need to be perfect, but I would like it a little bit straight. Okay, so there we go. And hopefully there's no cauliflower or anything there, but we'll see. So these two little bushes, they're kind of like in the background, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I wanna make those almost a really, really like a light bluish gray. So taking kind of a watered down mix. And actually, we're going to go ahead and hmm, I think I want to add a little bit of that diopside purple to it. So it can be a little bit like more like a purplish blue. So then we're going to go ahead and this little mix. We're going to go ahead and put down here. So we know. I wanted a little bit more purple though. wanted to make sure I was in framed. Okay, because we want kind of like a bluishy, purplish gray. Almost, kind of almost like a lavender color. Hmm. Still not the color I want. Let's add a little bit burnt sienna, see if that helps. Tone it down. Oh, there we go. Because I wanted like a smoky looking. So it's this one here, you guys. Not this one. And we'll, I'll mark that out. But this one. Okay. So let me put that there. So this is our blue mix. Plus diopside purple. Plus 
plus burnt sienna. And this is a no. We did not use that one. So we're gonna go ahead and take this smoky mix and I am gonna go ahead and and I'm gonna go back to my size six round. And I really like that that's like a smoky color. So then for these little tiny bushes here, we're just gonna kinda do this. And I really am loving this color scheme. And the good thing of having a limited palette and following your um, color wheel is everything will coordinate. So we're going to come back to that bush, but not yet. So we're gonna go ahead and do this one here. This little tree. And I wanted this color as well. So we're gonna just fill this kinda in because we're gonna go back over and put our little branches and tree stem and all that in, but not yet. Okay, so there's that color. And then, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in on this one and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do a second coat because then it'll make like it, it'll make it look like it's the other one is pushed back. So it'll give it a little bit of a dimension. So we got that filled in. So we can go ahead and probably put in our shade in. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit more of this ultramarine blue. And I wanna mix it with some burnt sienna. A little bit more ultramarine blue because we wanted a grayish color. And then we're going to water it down. Go ahead and add a little bit more water. And then I am going to dab this off because I do not want it too dark. And what we're going to do is we're going to go underneath here because we want to add a little bit of shading. And then we're going to go underneath the roof here. We're gonna go clear on this because this is gonna have shading because of the building in front. So we'll just go ahead and we can shade this and taking it down. And this is where having a sharp point will help. And if I get my head in the way, I apologize. Like I just, I wanna get this all filled in. with it being wet on wet, um, wet on dry, but I want it to, uh, this way it all, I don't want no hard lines is what I'm trying to say. So kind of going down and then filling this in.
And then we're gonna put shading underneath the roof there. And then kind of underneath these windows because windows do cast a little bit of a shadow. And this just gives it a little bit more dimension. So we can let that dry. And then I want a tree in burnt sienna. So we'll do this. Go ahead and do this in burnt sienna. I really love this color palette. The colors are so pretty. And I wanna make it a little bit darker on this side. And then we'll just kind of let that dry. And then I'm just trying to add just a little bit more dimension and stuff to this. So I'm going up. Okay. Perfect. And then I want to make this one here darker so it looks a little bit more like it's in front of the other one. And it will do that just by adding this second coat. I don't want it to be too thick. Or too watered down, I should say. Okay. And then we need to let this dry and then we'll come back and put in our last bush. But in the meantime, I think we can go ahead and see if I can find my white gel pen, which I can't. So you can either take a white gel pen, but I am going to go ahead and just use a little bit of a fine liner. I'm using a micron. And I am just going to go ahead and put in these little windows. I wanted to do it in white. However, I can't find my white gel pen. So I'm doing black. But you can use either or. Or if you wanted to paint it in with some white gouache or acrylic, you're more than welcome to. Is whatever you want. Did that a little crooked, but that's okay. One of these days, I am going to do a painting of just wonky, quirky houses. Uh, that will be fun. Okay. And then I'm just going to go ahead and outline the door. Just to give it a little something, something. Okay. So, we're going to come back and... This is, we're going to let this dry and then actually it's about dry now. That works. So we're going to take it back and I'm going to fill in this last tree and I am going to do it in Cornacridone Gold. I love that color too. It's another one of my favorite colors. And that is just really going to pop against that. 
turquoise color sky. And what you don't want to do is go over the house like I just did and over the line. So I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush. And then I am going to go ahead and get that color out. And dabbing it off. And clean it off again and then going down I'm glad this was not a stain in color and we're getting it cleaned right on up better so now we're just going to go ahead and let that dry and then when we come back we'll just add the last minute details to the tree okay i am back and i decided i want to make this purple a little bit brighter i think it needs it for the colors i am using so I'm gonna go ahead and glaze. And in this technique, what you're gonna do is I am just gonna, because watercolor is transparent, I can go over this and like so. And I like that a lot better. It, I, I like the smokiness, but I didn't. So I really think it needed just that, that pop. So I'm going to go ahead and dab this off. I don't want it to be too stark or too wet. And I am just going to go ahead and fill this in as well. Because I really, really like the brighter colors. I just think it's going to look a lot better. Yeah, I like that a lot better. And then we're just going to go ahead and do the same with this one. I want to go ahead and add the purple. So now we're going to go ahead and let that dry and when we come back we'll go ahead and put in the lines and all that and finish this. Okay we are back and I am going to go ahead and move the watercolor out of the way because now it is time for our Dr. Martin's bleed proof white to add in our details. So we're going to go from left to right because I'm right-handed. You might want to go the opposite way if you're left-handed. But we're going to begin by putting in our little bushes. And I really do love this P.H. Martin. It was one of the 
things in my haul, like I said in that video, is definitely a jaw dropper. So you may want to watch it if you haven't yet. Okay, then there's our first bush. And what I like to do for my trees and bushes My hands are really shaking, so if I don't get this as nice as I normally do, it's just, you know, just try to go soft-handed. You want the stem to be a little bit, or trunk to be a little bit thicker. But I try to give it a curl. So it just gives it that little bit of a whimsical look. Just kind of being real dainty okay and there's the second one but this um if you don't have the dr um martin's ph white you can use white gouache you can use some um, acrylic. You can use a white gel pen, a uni pen, whatever you have. Um, or you don't even have to do it in white. You can always, if you wanted to do, you can always, sorry if my hand's blocking, but you can always decide to do this in some um a micron pen is another choice so you have quite a bit of possibilities um color pencil is another option because basically you just want to use the materials you have I would hate for someone just to feel that they have to run out and get something for a tutorial. And pretty much for these, I try to give other ideas too to think outside the box. Um, if you had a pastel pencil, you can always use that or you can max, uh, mask it out ahead of time. It's just whatever way you just kind of want to do what works for you. Okay. You can even use a mixture of both. I'm glad you guys have in mind these videos being longer because I really do like actually showing you the process I take. If they get to be too long or driving you crazy, let me know. I'll try to do, figure something out, but everybody seems to like how I'm doing it so far. So if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? But basically I'm just trying to add a little bit more detail and my hands are really shaky today, which <laughs> works really great for wonky trees. But it has been difficult for others. That's why we are letting go of perfection. And this is a year to be happy at, you know. Things don't have to be perfect. Especially when you're working in a sketchbook. You know, it's so easy to get bogged down with, like, everyday life. And it's just too short. It really is. So, I am really taking time to embrace my art and go from there. Have fun experimenting. That's what sketchbooks are for. Okay, I think that's enough for that tree. And then I want to 
go on to this one. But, and these, you can just kind of have fun with them. You know, the shapes. And how you're doing it. Because trying not to get my hand in the way, but I'm talking you through it in case I am. Just kind of add in some lines. I'm going to make it a little bit thicker on the trunk. Go up. And then moving on to our last bush type thing. Well, I think this one is more of a tree. But I love these. It's a good way to practice colors and color mixing. Like I said, and we'll be starting that series pretty soon. Um, probably Friday will probably be the first video of it. Um, not quite sure, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be Friday. I'm just trying to give the pull another day or two to see give it a fair chance for everybody to have a chance to vote but okay so i think we are done with this painting i love how it looks I'm trying to clean the brush really good i got bleed proof white down in the ferrule and i did not want to do that So, here in a few, I'm going to not talk for the big reveal once we take this tape off. And I want to thank everybody for coming along. And if you stay this long, you are truly a superstar. So, I'm going to go ahead and pause this and we'll do the big reveal. So if you guys, here's the big reveal. If you guys like what you're seeing, make sure you hit the like and subscribe. So it lets YouTube know um, that other people may be interested. So God bless and happy painting. Bye, everyone.